Uh, chair. Mr. Chair, can I allow just one? Can I allow the lady and then I come to you, Senator? The okay. lady hasn't said anything at the back. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chair. My name is Joanne Mutai. I'm uh, the director of programming Jesus is Lord Radio and an accredited uh, journalist. On the issue of whether to ban live broadcast yes. of the miracles until they are verified. Yes. There are different types of miracles. Yes. Live coverage, first of all, exposes the lies and should be encouraged. The, the live broadcast of the miracles should be encouraged. Yes. Because everyone watching can tell that this is not edited. Yes. This is not photoshopped. This is true. Yes. And so it should be encouraged. Oh. I say there are types of miracles because, for example, the HIV cases that the doctors have been presenting, Yes. Those ones cannot be broadcasted after prayer immediately Correct. that this person it was HIV positive this morning yes. and now is HIV negative a few hours later yes. unless that person has gone back to hospital Correct. and the doctors have verified. Yes. But for miracles, for example, like a cripple, oh. a cripple, you can see their condition before healing. And that is why in the Ministry of Repentance and Holiness, yes. the prophet Dr. War, he actually opened up for the doctors and invited the doctors to create what they call a gate one. Yes. A gate designated specifically for those who are sick or with conditions. Yes. At that gate, you will meet the, the media and the doctors. Yes. Some of these doctors have been there. Sometimes you find volunteer doctors up to 2,800 yes. who come to volunteer to check the conditions. This person you say is crippled. Can we find out, and these are professionals, whether this person is truly crippled or has been put on a wheelchair so they can come and fake it? Yes. So the doctors have a way, because they are professionals, oh. to find out whether it is true this person is crippled, blind, deaf, or born with a condition uh, like autoimmune diseases. Mm. And so, if, which hospital have you been going to? Where, if you have cerebral palsy, if your child has cerebral palsy, which hospital diagnosed that? And which doctor? So they record that, and it is captured on video. That is a very powerful standard that can be emulated across the entire country mm. to stop these issues of shakahola and fake miracles and mm. abuse of religion. For the miracles that we are talking of, of cancer, HIV, mm. must first of all be taken back to the doctors mm. and tested mm. up to the DNA PCR level to ascertain that this person is truly healed mm. and can now be removed from drugs and from the system mm. and treatment. And only the doctors can remove them from, this, from treatment. Thank you. Uh, I'm going back uh, Honorable to Chair. Senator uh, yes. Veronica. Thank you. Mm. Um, and I like the distinction she has uh, put out mm. because there are different types of miracles. Yes. And if, if a someone is being televised or uh, a service is being televised, mm. then, uh, and it's running on live transmission, then it's very difficult to say you now stop it because what is this that you are afraid of stopping? Yes. If it can't be consumed by public, then it shouldn't be done in the first place. Yes. So if it's being consumed by the public, so let's see to the end of it. Mm. Now, the responsibility that then the church is called upon to do mm. is to ensure that... Uh, for instance, and this is the question we should be putting out to the churches, yeah. when somebody who has uh, conditions like, say, diabetes yeah. has come and been prayed for, has anybody asked that person not to take their medication even before they are confirmed by the doctor? Mm. whether they are healed or not healed. Because a sick person sometimes is a very desperate person and is willing to clutch onto any ray of hope. The problem we should have and the regulation should come around yeah. is what instruction is that person being given at that point when the person says, I'm healed. Because if I'm sick and I've gone for prayer, uh, I will have read other scriptures about faith to say that I must hang on to that faith, believe it, and walk it, confess it, Correct. and behave it. So, Chair, I think some of the questions we should be posing to the church is what instruction is that sick person 
being given after the healing is now declared that mm -hmm. you are healed. Have you told that person, for instance, they are doing cancer, they are having cancer, not to take their drugs, mm -hmm. to come out of hospital, to disappear from hospital? What is the instruction? And the responsibility of, if then a person has been healed from HIV, do you bring back that report to the church and the person himself? And can people attest to the truth yes. of that miracle? Exactly. Because if it is not true, the problem we are having may be chair is Christians who are not coming out clear to say, it hasn't worked for me, if it hasn't worked. And there is no sin in that. One will have a miracle, another one will have to wait a little longer. And, and the doctrine, it comes down, boils down to the doctrine and the practice of church and the need for uh, churches and denominations to be accountable and yes. to follow the sound doctrine and sound practices. Senator Chaptum. Um Chair, this, in my view, is a very complicated uh, area. Yes. And I see this from the Bishop uh, Margaret's uh, response, mm. that it is an event that takes place in somebody's life instantly uh, through a belief of the preaching and the gospel. But, Chair, yes. um, whether we should ban life miracle 